Hello viewers, I am Dr. M. S. Leka, Associate Professor, Department of Economics, SDNB Vaishnav College. Today, we shall have a comprehensive view of the recommendations of the 15th Finance Commission of India, which is an important component of the course on fiscal economics. But before that, we need to recollect the meaning and role of a finance commission. The finance commission is a constitutional body formed by the President of India to give suggestions on center-state financial relations. It is a quasi-judicial body. It is formulated under Article 280 of the Constitution of India and the President appoints a finance commission. It is constituted once in five years. Now, as far as the functions are concerned, the Finance Commission makes recommendations regarding the distribution of the net proceeds of taxes, which is to be shared between the centre and the states, and the allocation of share of such proceeds among the states, the principles which should govern the grants in aid, the continuance or modifications of any agreement between the union and the states, and any other matter concerning the financial relation between the centre and the states. The 15th Finance Commission is chaired by Sri N. K. Singh and this Finance Commission was required to submit two reports. The first report consisting of recommendations for the financial year 2021 was tabled in the Parliament in February 2020. The final report with recommendations for the 2021-26 period was tabled in the Parliament on February 1, 2021. The key recommendations in the report for 2021-26 to 26 include the shares of states in central taxes. The share of states in the central taxes for the 2021-26 period is recommended to be 41%, which is the same as that for 2020-21. This is less than 42% share recommended by the 14th Finance Commission for the 2015 to 20 period. The adjustment of 1% is to provide for the newly formed union territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh from the resources of the centre. The criteria for devolution. The criteria for distribution of central taxes among states for the 2021-26 period is the same as that for 2020 to 21. Now, the criteria for devolution includes the income distance. The income distance is the distance of a state's income from the state with the highest income. Income of a state has been computed as average per capita GSDP during the three year period between 2016 17 and 2018 19. A state with lower per capita income will have a higher share to maintain equity among states. The next would be the demographic performance. The terms of reference of the commission required it to use the population data of 2011 while making recommendations. Accordingly, the commission used 2011 population data for its recommendations. The demographic performance criterion has been used to reward efforts made by states in controlling their population. States with a lower fertility ratio will be scored higher on this criterion. Forest and ecology. This criterion has been arrived at by calculating the share of the dense forest of each state in the total dense forest of all the states. Tax and fiscal efforts. This criterion has been used to reward states with higher tax collection efficiency. It is measured as the ratio of the average per capita owned tax revenue and the average per capita state GDP during the three years between 2016-17 and 2018-19. So overall, the income distance accounts for 45%, area 15%, population according to 2011 census is 15%, demographic performance 12.5%, forest and ecology 10%, tax and fiscal efforts 2.5%. Now we move over to the grants. Over the 2021-26 period, the following grants will be provided from the center's resources. Revenue deficit grants, 
17 states will receive grants worth 2.9 lakh crore to eliminate revenue deficit. Sector specific grants. Sector specific grants of rupees 1.3 lakh crore will be given to states for eight sectors, namely health, school education, higher education, implementation of agricultural reforms, maintenance of PMGSY roads, judiciary, statistics, and aspirational districts and blocks. A portion of these grants will be performance linked to state specific grants. The Commission recommended state specific grants of rupees 49,599 crore. These will be given in the areas of social needs, administrative governance and infrastructure, water and sanitation, preservation of culture and historical monuments, high cost physical infrastructure and tourism. The Commission recommended a high level committee at state level to review and monitor utilization of state specific and sector specific grants. Next, grants to local bodies. The total grants to local bodies will be rupees 4.36 lakh crore, including 2.4 lakh crore for rural local bodies and 1.2 lakh crore for urban local bodies and rupees 70,051 crore for health grants through local governments. The grants to local bodies will be made available to all three tiers of panchayat, that is the village, block and district level. The health grants will be provided for conversion of rural sub-centers and primary health centers to health and wellness centers, support for diagnostic infrastructure for primary health care activities and support for urban HWCs, sub-centers, PHCs and public health units at the block level. The grants to local bodies will be distributed among states based on population and area with 90% and 10% weightage resp respectively. The Commission has prescribed certain conditions for availing these grants. The entry level criteria include publishing provisional and audited accounts in the public domain and fixation of minimum flow rates for property taxes by states and improvement in the collection of property taxes. No grants will be released to local bodies of a state after March 2024 if the state does not constitute a state finance commission and act upon its recommendation by then. Disaster risk management. The commission recommended retaining the existing cost sharing patterns between the center and states for disaster management funds. The cost sharing pattern between center and states is 90 is to 10 for northeastern and Himalayan states and 75 is to 25 for all other states. State disaster management funds will have a corpus of rupees 1.6 lakh crore, wherein the center's share will be 1.2 lakh crore. The fiscal roadmap. Fiscal deficit and debt levels. The commission suggested that the center bring down the fiscal deficit to 4.4% of GDP by 2025-26. For states, it recommended the fiscal deficit limit as 4% in 21-22, 3.5% in 22-23 and 3% during 23-26. If a state is unable to fully utilize the sanction borrowing limit as specified during the first four years, it can avail the unutilized borrowing amount in subsequent years. Extra annual borrowing worth 0.5% of GSDP will be allowed to states during first four years upon undertaking power sector reforms including reduction in operation losses, reduction in revenue gap, reduction in payment of cap cash subsidy by adopting direct benefit transfer and reduction in tariff subsidy as a percentage of revenue. It recommended forming a high powered intergovernmental group to review the Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management Act. It also recommended a new FRBM framework for center as well as states and oversees its implementation. Revenue mobilization, income and asset based taxation should be strengthened. To reduce excessive dependence on income tax on salaried incomes, the coverage of provisions related to tax deduction and collection at source should be expanded. Stamp duty and registration fees at the state level have large untapped potential. Computerized property records should be integrated with the registration of transactions and the market value of properties should be captured. 
state government should streamline the methodology of property valuation. GST Revenue neutrality of GST rate should be restored which has been compromised by multiple rate structure and several downward adjustments. Rate structure should be rationalized by merging the rates of 12% and 18%. States need to step up field efforts for expanding the GST base and for ensuring compliance. Financial management practices. A comprehensive framework for public financial management should be developed. An independent fiscal council should be established with powers to assess records from the center as well as states. The council will only have an advisory role, a time-bound plan for phased adoption of standard-based accounting and financial reporting for both center and state should be prepared while eventual adoption of accrual-based accounting is being considered. Both center and states should strive to improve the accuracy and consistency of macroeconomic and fiscal forecasting. States should have more avenues for short-term borrowings other than the ways and means advances and overdraft facility from the Reserve Bank of India. States may form an independent debt management cell to manage their borrowing programs efficiently. Other recommendations. Health. States should increase spending on health to more than 8% of their budget by 2022. Primary health care expenditure should be two-thirds of the total health expenditure by 2022. Centrally sponsored schemes CSS in health should be flexible enough to allow states to adapt and innovate. All India medical and health service should be established. Funding of defense and internal security. A dedicated, non-lapsable fund called the Modernization Fund for Defense and Internal Security, MFDIS, will be constituted to primarily bridge the gap between budgetary requirements and allocation for capital outlay in defense and internal security. The fund will have an estimated corpus of Rs 2.4 lakh crore over the five years, that is 2021 to 26. Of this, 1.5 lakh crore will be transferred from the Consolidated Fund of India. Rest of the amount will be generated from measures such as disinvestment of defense public sector enterprises and monetization of defense lands. Centrally sponsored schemes. A threshold should be fixed for annual allocation to CSS below which the funding for a CSS should be stopped. Third party evaluation of all CSS should be completed within a stipulated time frame. The funding pattern should be fixed upfront in a transparent manner and be kept stable. So thus these are the key recommendations of the 15th Finance Commission for the period 2021 to 26 of the Government of India. Thank you viewers. I will meet you with another topic. Thank you.